Hi folks, hope you're okay today, it's good to be with you and love to everybody out there. I just want to share about the history of revivals and it's from this booklet, uh, A History of Revivals by William E. Allen. You can get it from, uh, for further spiritual help, write to Inquiry Centre, Challenge P.O. Box 5723 Accra. And it's published by Dr. W uh, Mr. William Allen, Every Home Crusade, 43 Auckland Avenue, Belfast, Ireland. And uh, I just want to share about the history of revivals. And I hope some of these readings will be a blessing to you. <clears throat> Tertullian, writing about 200 AD, vindicating the Christian religion, said, Though we are strangers of no long standing, yet we have filled our all places of your dominion, cities, islands, corporations, council, armies, tribes, senate, the palace, the courts of uh, judicature. If the Christians had a mind to revenge themselves, their numbers are abundant, for they have a party not in this or that province only, but in all quarters of the world. 110 Ignatius spoke, 110 AD. Ignatius spoke of bishops being settled in the end of the world. Before 180, Christianity has spread rapidly in Asia Minor and Egypt. We also read of churches in North Africa, Gaul, Germany, Thrace, Thessaly. Uh, but great increase in the number of Christians came in the year 260 to 303 AD. Of this period, Eusebius writes, Who could describe those vast collections of men that flocked to the religion of Christ? and the illustrious concourse in the houses of worship, on whose account, not content with the ancient buildings, they erected spacious churches in all the cities. <coughs> Harnack estimated that in 303 AD, the Christian population in Asia Minor was nearly one half of the whole, and that scattered throughout the empire, they were a considerable minority, but the greatest proof of the growth and strength of Christianity was the Emperor Constantine, embraced the faith and gave peace, wealth and power to the church. The early British church. Gildas the Wise, a Welsh monk, writing about 500 AD, said the church is spread over the nation. It had spread moreover into Ireland and Scotland, Scotland and it was also a learned church. It had its own version of the Bible and its own ritual. St. Patrick 395-493 to became the Apostle of Ireland. He said, I was reformed by the Lord, and he had fitted me for being at this day what was once far enough from me, that I should concern myself for the salvation of others, when I used not to think even of my own. For about 30 years, St. Patrick preached the gospel throughout Ireland and established churches, monasteries, and schools from which missionaries were sent forth for four centuries after his death. A few lines from his famous breastplate hymn, which he composed at Tara on the eve of the, his historic interview with King uh, Liger, revealed the spirit of the man and the gospel he preached. Christ as light illumine and guide me. Christ as shield overshadow and cover me. Christ be under me. Christ be over me. Christ beside me on the left hand and right. Christ before me, behind me and about me. Christ this day be with me, within and without me. <clears throat> The Waldenese, Waldenese Revival of 1184 AD. The story of the faithfulness and endurance and he heroism of the Waldensian, Waldensians down the centuries is unique in the church history. Where they lived, there is not a rock that is not a monument, not a meadow that has not seen an execution, not a village that does not register its martyrs. In the 12th century, they experienced a revival which resulted in great evangelistic activity. This movement was led by Peter Waldo. All were missionaries and preached in the houses, streets and marketplaces. Reverend Clark says of them, the secret spread with extraordinary rapidity. The sect spread with extraordinary rapidity and extended from Aragon to Pomerania and Bohemia, though most numerous in the south of France, Alsace and in the mountain districts of Savoy, Switzerland and northern Italy. Bohemian Revival in 315, it was reckoned that there were 80,000 true Christians of Bohemia in Bohemia alone. 
This remarkable spiritual revival was partly the result of the labours of three reformers, Conrad of Waldensi, Milik of Moravia and Matthias of Jano. He prepared the way for the movement that was led by John Huss. In 467, some Bohemian Waldensians and Moravians united in what was known as the Unitus Fratrum Church. When the Reformation dawned, they had 400 churches and were circulating their own Bohemian Bible. This persecuted remnant of the followers of Huss continued until 1715, when Christian David led a company of them into Saxon Silesia, where they settled on the state of Count Zidendorf. John Wycliffe In the 14th century, Wycliffe reopened the Bible and began to expose the errors of the Roman Church. Many were conf converted through the, his preaching and writing. He also founded an association of preachers called Lollards and sent them to preach up and down the country. Wycliffe was a man of prayer and the reforms he advocated were the result of his own spiritual enlightenment through reading the Bible. He declared the sacred scriptures are the property of the people and one which no one should be allowed to rest from them. Christ and his apostles converted the world by making known the scripture, and I pray with all my heart that through doing the things contained in the book, we may all together come to the everlasting life. John Huss embraced the doctrine of Wycliffe, and after exerting a mighty influence for the gospel in Bohemia, he was, mar in Bohemia, he was martyred in 1415. Savon Arola, after listening to a sermon from an Augustian friar, Savon Arola, at the age of 23, decided to adopt the monastic life. He became famous as a preacher in the Lent of 1489, and shortly afterwards he was elected prior of St. Mark's Covenant, Florence. Uh, Villari says, Wonderful was the effect of Savon Arola's preaching on the corrupt and pagan society of Florence. His natural, spontaneous, heart-stirring eloquence with its exalted imagery and outbursts bursts of righteous indignation was entirely unprecedented in that area of pedantry and the simulation of the classical oratory. The Reformation under the Roman Church, millions of souls lived in continual fear of the wrath to come. No doubt their cry came up before God and, his, and, and he came down to deliver them. Through bitter experience, Luther knew the spiritual agonies of the people and the failure of any good works to give assurance of salvation. Then he began to read the Bible and slowly the truth of justification by faith dawned upon his soul. It is a wonderful to follow the growth of Luther's work. The Reformation burned in his heart and he was possessed with divine strength and wisdom as he met each difficult situation. Luther prayed hours every day. Once a spy followed him to a hotel, the next day he told his employer that Luther had pray prayed nearly all night and that he could never conquer one who prayed like that. One day Luther was told that Melchanon was dying. He hurried to see him and aroused him from his stupor. Melchanon! looked at him and said, Oh, Luther, is this you? Why don't you let me depart in peace? We can't spare you yet, Philip, replied Luther. And turning round, he went upon his knees and wrestled with God for his recovery. Uh, from that time, Melchanan recovered, and Luther said, God gave me back my brother Melchanan in direct answer to prayer. Luther knew what it was to travail in prayer, to wrestle with the powers of darkness that engulfed the whole world, listen to him in an agony of prayer, in the morning of the day when he had to make his defence before the Diet of Worms. Almighty and everlasting God, how terrible is the world! How weak is the flesh and how powerful is Satan! O God, O God, do thou help me against all the wisdom of the world! For this is not my work, but thine. The cause is thine, and it is a righteous and eternal cause. O Lord, help me, faithful and unchangeable God! Thou hast chosen me for this work, I know it well. Act then, O God. Stand at my side for the sake of thy beloved Jesus Christ. Amen. God answered this prayer immediately and filled Luther with such strength and wisdom that he won that day, the greatest day in the, hist in the victory in the history of the Reformation. The Reformation soon spread over Germany, France, Switzerland, Holland, Denmark, Poland, Sweden and the British Isles, but behind this mighty movement 
we must remember there was an agonizing prayer of millions of hearts, much preaching the gospel doctrines, and through the invention of printing, a wide distribution of the scriptures. Amen. So, um, we're going to do a few videos on this because it's just a, such an amazing little booklet and it's just so encouraging um, just to know how God has worked in the past. So, we'll do another couple of videos, okay? God bless you.